Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech with NK. In this video, I'll propose a solution to the exercise testing my Twitter from CS50's introduction to programming with Python. I'm going to show you how I solve the exercise. However, my aim is just to provide you with a few ideas that you could use when solving the exercise later on on your own. So that said, let's look at the exercise and see what's expected from us. So we are told to create a Python file, we call it twitter.py, and re-implement setting up my Twitter from problem set 2. Restructuring your code per the below, wherein Shorten expresses a string as an input and returns the same string but with the vowels A, E, I, O, and U omitted, whether inputted in uppercase or in lowercase. So if you don't remember what the exercise setting up my Twitter entailed, you can just click this link and it's going to take you back to that page. But most of it has already been explained here because it's basically a file that takes out the vowels from a string input. So we are told to recreate the file twitter.py and in this format, we define the function main, shorten, and then call main at the end of the program. Then in the file called twitter.py, we are to implement one or more functions that collectively test your implementation of shorten thoroughly, each of which names should begin with test so that you can execute your test with pytest, test underscore twitter.py. We've been given a few hints here, but there's not a lot in it. We're just told to import Twitter or importing shorten directly from the file Twitter and to make sure to return and not print in the function shorten. Also, we're expected to create a folder, we'll call it test underscore Twitter, move into that folder and create the file test underscore Twitter.py. And in this same folder, test underscore Twitter, we're supposed to create that file Twitter.py. And how do we test our code to make sure we've done what's expected? We're expected to run pytest of test underscore Twitter.py twice. The first time it should work just fine without any errors and the second time we should deliberately insert some errors in our file twitter.py to create bugs and pytest should be able to catch those errors and return them. And when you're done, you can run check 50 of cs50 slash problem slash all of these to check your code and submit it with this. And this check basically is checking the file test underscore twitter.py and not the file twitter.py because the aim of the exercise is to check whether we've written enough tests for our code. So I think with this the exercise is clear enough and I'll just scroll back up here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in VS Code and we'll solve the exercise together. And this is what our file twitter.py should look like. Yeah, you notice I've already implemented the file twitter.py and test underscore twitter.py but by now I'm sure you can do that on your own. Because of the nature of the exercise, what I'm going to do in this file twitter.py is just to modify the function shorten. I'm not going to implement the function main because in our file test underscore twitter.py, we are not testing for the function main. And the aim of the exercise is mainly to check if we've written enough tests for the function shorten. So I'll just implement the function shorten and forget about the function main. And one way to go about it is you could go back to your file twitter.py copy your implementation of the file and just paste it in the function shorten, but I'm not going to do that for this video. That's because in my previous implementation of the file twitter.py, I wrote a few lines of code, probably five or six, to be able to solve the exercise, but there's a string function that can enable us do this in just one line of code, and which is what I want to show you today. But if you're interested in knowing how we solved the exercise before, I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video to the video setting up my Twitter. All we need to do in this function shorten is to return word.translate and in this method translate, this is a method I mentioned earlier on, we're going to pass a parameter to it. I'm going to type in str.maketrans. This is another string method that can take up to three parameters. The first one I'm going to leave empty, comma. The second one I'm going to leave empty still. And in the third one, I'm going to pass a string of vowels. That will be A, E, I, O, U in lowercase and A, E, I, O, U in uppercase. And that's it for the implementation of the function shorten. If you're wondering how this works, basically the function or the method translate is going to remove any of these vowels in the string word, and which is just what we want it to do. 
But if you want to get a better understanding of how this method works, you can just google it online and everything will be explained to you. But it's very easy. Basically, with this string method make trans, we are able to remove these vowels from the string contained in the variable word. And one easy way to think about the function make trans is like an upgrade to the method replace. Because with these first two parameters, it's able to behave just like the function replace. Thus, if I pass in some parameters here and here, it's going to replace the string I passed in in the second parameter with the strings in the first parameter, so just like the function replace. And I think that's a little bit clearer now. So now that we're done with the function shorten, like I said, I'm not going to implement the function main, and I'm just going to go to the file test underscore twitter.py, and we're going to write some tests for the function shorten. Well, the first thing we need to do is to import the file twitter.py, and we can access the function shorten if we say, from Twitter, import, shorten. So there are a number of tests that you can think about to test the function shorten. Like we are told in the exercise, we are supposed to test this function thoroughly. And you can go ahead and write so many lines of code to do this, but I'm just going to write four functions to test four things. The first thing I want to test is if the function shorten can take away vowels in lowercase. Secondly, I'm going to test if it can remove the vowels in uppercase. Next, I'm going to test that the function shorten ignores numbers that could be passed in the string. And lastly, I'm going to test that this same function ignores any punctuation marks that could be passed in the string. I'll go ahead and create my first function. I'm going to call this function test underscore lowercase with zero parameters. And in this function, I'm going to assert that shorten of, let's say, thanks will be equal to the string thnks. Well, this is just going to remove one vowel, but that's fine. If this works, then the function works just fine. I'm going to copy this and paste the number of times because I don't want to keep writing that code again and again. So I'm going to paste it in here. I'll paste it again. And I'm going to paste it one more time. And I'm just going to modify the function names for each of these functions. This one, I'm going to call it uppercase. Oh uppercase and I'm going to assert that shorten of let's say good is a string gd oh gd next I'm going to call this one test of number so I'll just say test underscore num oh let me convert this back to lowercase so test underscore num and I'm going to assert that shorten of thanks let's say one two three is equal to thanks one two three without the a and last but not the least, I'm going to modify this other function name. I'm going to call it test of punctuation. Punctuation. And I'm going to assert that thanks with a period at the end is equal to thanks with a period at the end without the A. Yeah, my tests are pretty much alike and very similar, but that's fine. If this pass, then we're okay. I'll go ahead and save this file. I'll open up my terminal once more. And I'm going to run pytest of test underscore twitter dot pi and if i run this like we expected we passed all the four tests which means our function shorten is behaving just properly so we're told to introduce a few bugs in the file twitter dot pi and see if pi test is going to catch those errors so i'm going to go back to my file twitter dot pi and in this file let's say we omit this a i'm going to save this again and when i come back in here we don't have to change anything all I need to do is run this file again, and if I press enter, oh, up to three field. And if we think about it, we realize that that was bound to happen. So if we look back at the error message, we're going to see the three tests that failed. Test underscore lowercase, test underscore number, and test underscore punctuation. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of my terminal for us to get a better view of these error messages. So let me scroll back here. And now when we look at this first function, test underscore lowercase, we're asserting that thanks is equal to thanks without an A, but when the code is being run, PyTest was expecting the result to be thanks without an A, but this is what we actually got, thanks with the A. So like you see, this negative and this positive sign, this tells you what your code was expecting or what PyTest was expecting, and this tells you what actually was returned. And if we use this understanding to look at the second function test underscore number, we run shorten of thanks one, two, three, 
this is what we're expecting but our code end up returning things without removing the a and the third function the same thing the a was omitted so this tells us that our code has a problem with the lowercase vowel a and what we should do is to go back to our file twitter.py and make sure that that vowel is among our list of vowels that were taken out from the string so if i go back to twitter.py let me reduce the size of the terminal and correct this bug that we introduced intentionally or put back the a so if i save this i go back to my terminal scroll a little let me clear this then i'm going to run pytest of test underscore twitter.py and again we've passed our for test and so with this we show that our function shutting works just fine and we've written quite a decent number of tests to be able to test this function but I can guarantee you those four tests are just enough to enable you pass the exercise. If you go back and run check 50 with this code, you'll be just fine. But before we separate, I'm going to modify the function test underscore Twitter a little bit to show you what more we could do. Okay, so this looks a little bit different from what we just saw, but it's the same principle. I've just written a number of functions to check different behaviors of our code. In this first function, I'm checking an empty string. In this other function, I'm checking a case where there are no vowels. In this other function, only vowels, and so on and so forth. But the new stuff I wanted to show you here is that when writing your code, if you're not satisfied with the error messages provided by PyTest, you can actually pass in your own messages like so. So at the end of the line, assert shorten of this equal to this. You can put a comma and then pass in your own default message that you would like PyTest to return when you run your code. So while solving the exercise, go ahead and try this out and see the way it works. And I think with this, we're done with the exercise testing my Twitter. I like to believe the code was short and easy enough for everyone to understand, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll be more than pleased to answer you. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. That said, have a good day.